I'm Professor Allworth. We're going to be talking to some students today uh, who are the recipients of Allworth Fund scholarships in the STEM fields. These students are incredible. Today we're going to be talking to Gabby Lott. Hi Gabby. Hi. Thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. Um, so let's start with the very basic stuff. Uh, tell us, you know, where you went to high school, uh, you know, how you developed your interest, what you're majoring in. Tell us all of that. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Duluth and I attended Duluth East High School. Uh, I just finished my junior year at the College of St. Benedict in St. Joseph, Minnesota, and I'm a biochemistry major there on the pre-med track. Wow. What are the skills, what are the kind of dis disciplines involved in biochemistry? Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, I would say I first became interested in biochemistry because in high school my favorite course was chemistry and um, then when I got to college I realized, oh, I really like biology as well and the biochemistry major really just combined um, those two interests. And I would say that for people uh, studying biochemistry, it's good to be able to think outside of the box and really just kind of ask yourself the questions of why do things happen the way they do and you know we're looking a lot at like cellular signaling pathways and um, kind of complex chemical reactions happening in all forms of life and so being able to look at that and analyze it is um, really important. And this is part of the research that you're going to be doing um, on a project you're working on this summer, correct? Yeah, so this summer I'm going to be at the University of Iowa and I'm through their summer MD-PhD program, I'll be conducting research on biochemistry, cellular signaling pathways, um, specifically related to sarcoma cancers. So I haven't been assigned my specific project yet, but uh, I'll be working with Dr. Chris Damali and I'm really looking forward to it. So you're actually doing some, helping with research regarding uh, a form of cancer. Yep. Well, I would say that's pretty important. Um, so talk a little bit about um, your college experience and, and what the professors were like and, and how that worked out for you. Yeah, I never had that like awe moment of yes, I'm going to go to St. Ben's. It was kind of like I decided the day before decision day and so oh. I got there and I was nervous but I would say through reaching out to professors I really found my place. Um, I had never thought about research going into college but my very first semester, I had a chemistry professor who did research on this small enzyme, which is a protein that basically just speeds up chemical reactions. And he was looking at this enzyme linked to cancer. And I thought that was really cool. So I started going to office hours and I asked him about his research. And then come springtime, he uh, told me that he thought I would be a really good researcher and he encouraged me to apply for my school's summer research program. And at first, I was really hesitant. Um, I wasn't sure if that was the path for me, but I decided to go for it. And now I can't imagine not doing research. I love it. And I've thought a lot about you know, what I want to do after my undergraduate degree, because I do think I want to combine research into what I do now in the future. Great. Let's, talk, let's back up a little bit to when you, you um, applied for and discovered you were going to get the Allworth Scholarship. A lot of people are afraid to apply for a scholarship like that because they feel like they have to be perfect in every way to get a scholarship. And that's not necessarily, there are a lot of things that go into the determination of, you know, what makes us a great scholarship recipient. So talk about that a little bit, if you would. I would say that um, never like count yourself out for certain scholarships. If you qualify and you have the time to apply, do it because you never know what will come out of it. and. Um, you don't need to be this perfect student involved in you know, 10 different activities with a great ACT score and great grades to um, succeed in college and really anything in life. So I would say apply even if you don't think you will get the scholarship. So was it, what did you feel like when you found out you um, had actually gotten the Allworth Scholarship? And, and what did that mean to you and your family in terms of financial, obviously, good news? Yeah. Um, I would say first I was just filled with like happiness. I was really surprised that I'd been awarded it um, and overall just really, really excited. And I would say that the Allworth Scholarship has allowed me to more focus on my academic endeavors than um, you know, needing the finances. So yeah, at some point in your academic career, which has been admittedly very successful, there must have been times when, when you weren't quite as successful or had setbacks or weren't feeling confident, how did you get past that um, 
and, and what helped you do that? Uh, I remember freshman year, my first organic chemistry lab that I ever took. Um, I got a 2 out of 10 on my first quiz and I was failing the class and I had never been failing a class before and so I was just so nervous and I think I really did start to doubt myself and whether or not I could um, succeed and I thought it was really interesting too that um, actually this professor that I went and saw, uh, one of the first things she said to me is I failed my first four tests in graduate school. She's like, I had straight C's in some of my undergrad classes and now I have a PhD in chemistry and I'm, I'm a professor here and I love it. And so um, something that that made me realize is that my professors are also just people and they want to help me and you know all of their students succeed and so if you go to them and you're honest and you say something like I'm frustrated with my performance in this class because I feel like I'm putting in the time and effort they will do what they can to help you succeed because they want the same thing. Well it sounds like there's a very important lesson in there about um, a little bit of failure and the value of failure Yeah. and being able to learn from what happened. Most definitely. And not only your own experience, but the, but the professor sharing her experience mm -hmm. and letting you know that you weren't the only one to have ever hit, you know, kind of hit the wall. Yeah. That's great. What would you say to, to convince, a, a, you know, someone in high school that they should be looking at STEM fields and just giving it a whirl just to see, because you never know? Yeah, I would say that if you have any interest whatsoever in STEM fields and you're willing to put in the time and effort, you know, if you're dedicated and you're willing to be resilient, you can succeed in STEM, in science and math, and you don't have to be the star student to um, excel in STEM. And um, I would also say keep an open mind because, for example, research is something I never considered going into college and it was through um, meeting a professor who encouraged me to try it out for a summer that I found I really like research and it's now something that I might want to pursue for the rest of my life. So you're saying follow your passion basically. Yeah and that's something that I definitely had to learn too and even in college I remember freshman year we had this thing called the club fair which is exactly that it's every single club on campus and I remember going freshman year and signing up for way too many things um, but it was kind of through signing up for different things, trying a whole bunch of um, really different activities that I found what I really enjoy. And so now I've been able to narrow it down to like five or ten things that I just love and I can fully dedicate myself to those things and excel. Good message.